the New York Jets shocked the world coming back from a 13 point deficit in under two minutes to complete the comeback and beat the Cleveland Browns. Before we get into it, I'll ask if you enjoy this at any point, be sure to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. We're going to dive right into this game. So the Jets won this game 31-30 on the back of an incredible passing performance from Joe Flacco and the rookies stepping up. Brees Hall caught a touchdown, went for 60 total yards on, I believe, eight touches. Uh, definitely got to get him more touches moving forward, clearly. And then in addition to that, they got some great contribution and a breakout game out of none other than Garrett Wilson, their 10th overall pick. A lot of people felt like they might trade that pick away for Tyree Kill at one point. But right now, you got to like what you see out of Garrett Wilson through two games. He had his breakout eight reception, 100 plus yard and two touchdown game. And every touchdown was needed. He caught the game winning go ahead touchdown that ended up sealing the game. This was a huge win for the Jets. I had them winning this game, but I felt like this game was over when they were down by 13 with two minutes to go. Just like pretty much anybody should at that moment. But the Jets hung in there. They continued to fight. And yes, they gave up a touchdown. But I will actually say this right now. The Rams were criticized back in 2018 by a lot of sports bettors and such fantasy owners that they didn't score a touchdown that Todd Gurley easily had to walk into the end zone. Well, in this game, it kind of shows you why that that team took that approach. The Jets could have lost this game if Nick Chubb doesn't go in the end zone. Actually, there's literally zero chance the Jets have of winning the game if the Browns just simply run down the clock and don't score. Well, they scored. And so it gave the Jets an opportunity to throw a bomb down the field, a complete lapsing coverage thrown to Corey Davis monster throw by Flacco right out of the gates to then get that touchdown and then get the onside kick and then go down and score another touchdown this is everything that the Jets wanted to see out of Joe Flacco who no this is not going to be a quarterback controversy he is not the better quarterback and he is not going to start moving forward but he's off to a good start he is top three in the league in passing and he's given the Jets every chance and then some to potentially win the first two games of the season. Now, here's the problem, okay? The problem is the first game, the defense showed up and they were great. The offense simply didn't. Joe Flacco dealt with some drops. He had some hard times in the pocket, was pressured a ton. So now, even though the Jets are dealing with all these injuries in the offensive line. You talk about losing Mekhi Becton for the year, then they signed Dwayne Brown, now they're losing him. They're starting rookie, right tackle, Max Mitchell, and there's a lot of things that are going on here. However, Joe Flacco had some protection in this game, and Joe Flacco in the offense was humming in this one. A far cry from last week. And I'll say this, if this offense showed up in any capacity to what they showed up this week, they would have won last week and they'd be 2-0. and But looking at this game, to come back, when this defense could not stop a nosebleed, Jacoby Brissett was tearing through the Jets' defense. And you can go through all the numbers. It supports everything I'm saying. You look at the missed tackles. Quincy Williams, LaMarcus Joyner, Jordan Whitehead, all of them struggled with missed tackles, 17. Now, I have to throw a quick little note in here, and I'm not necessarily trying to defend Jordan Whitehead, but there needs to be some context. Whitehead was playing through an injury that he very well could have been sat out with in this game and probably should have. He wasn't the same. He's a great tackler, and he wasn't the same playing with this injury. So I think that did result in four missed tackles. The Jets have to tackle better. It's really that simple. They have to play better in coverage. They have to do what they did against the Ravens. I thought they had a great game plan, and they really stifled Lamar Jackson. Even though he threw three touchdowns, that was not the Lamar Jackson we saw this week against Miami. However, Jacoby Brissett, going from last week not really playing all that well to absolutely carving up and dicing up this defense was just a little surprising to me, and it's not something I expected. I had the Jets winning this game because of the defense. I did not expect them to have to score 31, and I did not expect them to score 31, but they did, and because of that, they are 1-1 one one on the season. 
In addition to that, looking around the division, Miami came back 28-7 to at halftime. They took the lead and then won the game 42-38 over that same Ravens team. So they're 2-0 in the division. The Bills play tonight, and the Patriots stole one in Pittsburgh 17 to 14. So the Jets are tied with the New England Patriots for third place, one and one. Miami's 2 and 0, and we'll see what ends up happening with the Bills. I believe they'll win that game. But the Jets are not out of anything, and they made that presence known when they won this game. Cleveland clearly thought they had the game in the bag, and the Jets came out firing on all cylinders when they needed to, and they came away with the win. It's a credit to Robert Sala, who honestly just comes out and he says, you know what? We're not going to punt. We're going to throw a a fake punt. I think that fake punt with Braden Mann was a huge reason they were able to stay in this game. They needed to continue that drive. They were able to score. They needed to do that. So there are things like that that you see in a young coach in Salah. He is learning. He's gaining confidence. He's gaining belief in this team. Joe Douglas also is doing that. I think they do have the secret ingredient to success. I really like what I'm seeing out of this team. And I've said it. I said it coming in the year. I think they win nine games. Does that mean they go to the playoffs? Maybe not. But, you know, I think they go nine and eight. And I think that, you know, they could win 10 games. And that might not even be enough for the playoffs. But this team is more loaded than you think. They have a lot of talent. They're not just the Jets. They're a good football team with a good coach, good offensive coordinator, a really nice direction with the front office, and they're playing without their starting quarterback and the franchise quarterback in Zach Wilson, who I imagine will be back in time for the Steelers game. And there's a good chance that the Jets might face rookie quarterback Kenny Pickett in that game because Mitch Trubisky did not look very good yesterday. And I think that's probably around the time. Obviously, you're not going to see it on a short week with them playing on Thursday, but you could see a switch from Trubisky to Pickett in that game. So that's something to look forward to. But sticking with this game, going back to the offensive line, I thought, yeah, obviously, George Fant struggled, right? You'd like to see better from him, but at the same time, he's going up against Miles Garrett. You're not going to win every battle there. Uh, Garrett definitely put some pressure on him. But at the same time, While he gave up five pressures, Fant didn't allow a sack. That was a big thing for me. And obviously, if you keep Flacco off the ground, you allow him to throw the football, Flacco can get it done. And he proved that in this one. In addition to that, the offensive line was pretty solid interior-wise. You only had three pressures given up by Elijah Vera Tucker, two given up by Lakin Tomlinson, only one by McGovern. None of them gave up sacks. The only one who gave up a sack was rookie right tackle Max Mitchell. One sack on the day is something that Jets fans will absolutely take after last week. So one sack on the day by a rookie uh, right tackle who, yeah, people are going to get on for the sack, but I think he played a pretty good game all things considered. I mean, this is a good defense. That's one thing you can't knock about the Cleveland Browns. They have developed and they have built a very good defense. And so I thought you saw some good things out of Max Mitchell. Something to be very excited about moving forward as the mid-round pick is already getting these really valuable reps and he needs him uh, because, you know, he needs to be in there because Dwayne Brown's out. But just what he's been able to do Uh, you know, in this game, I thought was, you know, impressive. And uh, yeah, again, sack, but I thought he played well. The pass rush did get to Brissett, not as often as Lamar Jackson, 17 last week, but 13, that's pretty darn good. The Jets sit at 30 pressures on the year defensively through two games. That's averaging 15 a game. That is pretty darn good. And I think the Jets will definitely take that. They'll run with that. They'll continue to get better. John Franklin Myers had an injury scare. Sauce Gardner left the game. Uh, So, you know, hope is that everything's good there. Um, In addition to that, I wanted to give a shout out to John Franklin Myers, as well as Carl Lawson, who were in the top 10 this week in pass rushers, uh, according to PFF grades. So that is that's a hell of a job there. Once again, Joe Douglas putting together this defense, Robert Sala defensive minded. You just got to love what you see early on out of this team. And we'll see if they can continue that momentum. They're going up against an 0-2 Cincinnati Bengals team uh, back at MetLife, who is not very happy about losing a close one to the Steelers week one in overtime and losing a game down to the wire in Dallas without Dak Prescott. So the Bengals are 0-2. They're fresh off a Super Bowl 0-2. We'll see what happens. Joe Burrow's leading the league in sacks. That's not a good thing you want to be leading the league in as a quarterback. So we'll see what the Jets can do. Getting to him, causing some pressure, 
forcing some errant throws. We've already seen them. They've gone up against uh, you know, one quarterback that's one of the best in all of football in Lamar Jackson and gave him some fits. Another quarterback they weren't so great against uh, in Jacoby Brissett, but we'll see what happens with Joe Burrow. Bottom line, Zach Wilson comes back soon. The Jets are one and one. The offense is humming right now. The defense has shown you that it can be a dominant force. And if those two things come together, you'll probably see a win this upcoming Sunday, or at least a very close game this upcoming Sunday against the reigning AFC champions. But until next time, I'm Jake Ellenbogen. If you enjoy this, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And let me know what your thoughts were on the game. Once again, the Jets win 31-30, and they will move on next week to play Cincinnati. Take care, folks. Later.